Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks for joining us online today for this Christmas Eve message. One of my favorite things to do at Christmas each year is to watch kids open their presents because you never really know what type of reaction they're going to give as they open their gifts. You've got the littlest kids who are probably more enamored with the gift wrapping than what's actually inside. We've all seen that, right? Those little kids who are opening their gifts and they look at the, the gift wrapping in their hands. And I remember, well, I don't remember. There was a video of me as a kid with it stuck to my hand and I was kind of frustrated trying to get it off because I was a bit of a neat freak. But it seems like when you're really young, you're more enamored with the outside of the gift than what's inside. But then as you get a little bit older and a lot older as lots of us are, we're not as enamored by this gift wrap. Instead, we're consumed with what's inside. We try to rip through that wrapping paper as fast as possible. Then there's the box, but it's taped shut. So you grab some scissors, stab into that thing, and you rip it open because you want to reveal what's inside the box. And it's at that point, as you pull a gift from inside the box, that I love to watch people's reactions as they're opening their gift. Because in that moment, you see their response to the gift that they have received. Maybe they're overjoyed. You see their eyes light up and, and a smile beams across their face. Maybe they're confused. They're not even sure what it is that's inside that box. Hopefully this doesn't happen, but maybe they're even unimpressed, disappointed with what they received. But what we do know is that there is always some type of response when the gift is revealed. When there's this revelation of what's inside the box, it leads to a response of some kind. Revelation, then response. And this is a pattern that we see revealed throughout the Christmas story as well. Particularly in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14 as an angel visits some shepherds and brings a grand revelation. So starting in verse 10, we hear the revelation of the angel here in Luke chapter 2. The angel says to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. He's almost saying like, here it is. There's about to be this amazing revelation. This, this amazing news is about to be delivered to you that's going to bring great joy. We have to imagine here the shepherds, I mean, they're terrified because they just saw an angel, but they're probably also anticipating, what is this good news? They're on the, the edge of their seat. What's the revelation? Of course, we all know and are familiar with this news, but remember, this was brand new to the shepherds. So at the end of verse 10, we can almost feel them waiting What's this revelation? And then verse 11 comes. The news is brought. The angel says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This revelation, this big news, this good news was something important. It was something huge. Now, it would have been pretty big news if God had sent a prophet into the world. There hadn't been really a prophet for many years. But this revelation from God was way bigger than just a prophet. Because the Messiah of promise, God himself, has come into the world as a baby. And that baby is the Savior of the world. And the fact that this baby is the Savior implies that the world is in need of saving. From what, we might ask? Well, the world is in need of saving from sin from rebellion to God. Since the, the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve chose to disobey God, sin has been a part of every single person's life. It passed through generations from then on to every single person on earth. And so every person has what we call a sin nature. At the very core of, of every person, is sin. We are all sinners. And the price of that sin, that sin nature, the Bible tells us, is death. God laid that out so clearly for mankind, saying, don't disobey or you will surely die. But each and every one of us 
has disobeyed anyways. Therefore, we deserve death. And that's why this revelation from from the angels, from God, that the angels delivered was such good news. This is why the angel said it's good news of great joy. Because God had sent the one who could save people from that death and save people from their sins. The Savior would free people from their sin and give them new life. The angel said as much back in Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, when he said that Jesus will save his people from their sins. The Savior had come into the world. And this was the announcement. In a sense, this was the gift that the angels opened in the presence of these shepherds. And as the gift of the Savior was revealed, we know that there has to be some type of of response, right? When there's a revelation, where there's a gift as good as the Savior coming into the world, of course, there's going to be a, a response of some kind. And as we read on, we see that the angel's response to this revelation was to start singing a chorus for Christ. We read the third song in the book of Luke that surrounds the very first Christmas. In verses 13, and 14. We read there, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying these words, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So the response of the angel to the good news was to sing praises to God as they proclaim glory to God in the highest. The angels are here outpouring their adoration for God. And it's not just, it's not enough for just one angel to do this either. No, it says there that this angel is joined by a heavenly host, by many angels. They they gather together and they are in front of these shepherds and they adore God. They make God's greatness known because he has given such a great gift. They worship him and it's fitting to praise God when he has given mankind such great news, the news of the Savior. And as the angels continue singing their response, they move from this worship of God to singing about what the Savior would bring. He would bring peace on earth. The angels know that this this baby, Jesus, that was born was a peacemaker. And first and foremost, Jesus would make peace between God and man. Jesus would bridge the gap between this this separation of God and man that happened because of sin. Jesus would reconcile us as human sinners to God. He would bridge that gap. We would be able to be reconciled, brought together once again. And Jesus would accomplish that, of course, years later, on the cross, where Jesus, being man's perfect representative, the spotless lamb, took the sins of mankind on himself. He faced the wrath of God that we all deserve. And why did he do that? The angels tell us here. It was to bring us peace so that we as humans might once again have a right relationship with God. It's because Jesus came to earth as a baby, gave his life on the cross, that we can have peace with God at all. And that, friends, is good news. It's no wonder that this army of angels responded to this amazing news of peace on earth by glorifying God, because he made that available to men. Again, their song here is a proper, a fitting response to this grand revelation. Now, the question that we all have to ask ourselves is how will we respond to this same good news? You know, we know this news. We know this revelation well. The Savior, Christ the Lord, has come into the world. You know, that's what we celebrate today. That's what we celebrate tomorrow on Christmas Day as well. But how will we respond to that revelation? 
Well, if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with God, you haven't experienced this peace that he provides, I would urge you to respond by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. He's the one that saves us from our sins. He's the one that gives us peace with God, but we can only experience that salvation and that peace if we respond to him in faith. Romans 5 verse 1 says this, Since we have been justified by faith, that is, made right before God by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This means that to have this peace with God, to be justified, to be made right in God's eyes, we must have our faith in Jesus. We must believe that he has paid the price that we deserved through his death on earth the cross, and that he rose again from the grave. And when we do that, when we believe, it's that simple, we'll be saved. So if you've never done this, I just want to urge you once again to respond to this good, good news by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. And for those of you who are here today, listening today, who have trusted in Jesus, Our response to this revelation of the Savior's coming should be similar to the angels. We ought to praise God because he's been so good to us. He's made a way for us to be in right relationship with him. He's blessed us abundantly by giving us peace, amazing peace. And so with the angels, we should say glory to God in the highest praising him, making his greatness known, for he is certainly the only one who is worthy of our praise. So let's take some time now to respond in praise to this revelation of the Savior's coming through a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful today that you sent your son Jesus to earth and that when Jesus came to earth, he came to bring peace among men, to reconcile us in our relationship with God. We do just praise you for that fact. Jesus came as a peacemaker between us and God. What a gift. Help us to never grow old of hearing that gift. Help that that gift to always stay fresh in our minds and in our hearts, that we would continue to praise you for that. And Lord, as well, if there's any who are listening to to this message today that do not know that peace, that have yet to put their faith in you, that have yet to be reconciled in their relationship with God, we just pray, Lord, that you would put it on their hearts to do so, that they would trust in you, they would believe the message of the gospel, this good news, and that they would have this peace. This is what we desire, God. This is what you desire. And so we pray that this would be the case, that you would imprint this message of good news on people's hearts today. And again, Lord, that they would respond in faith. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen.